Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of physiology that we are doing from Guyton. Today we are going to do chapter number 56 which is the cortical and the brainstem control of motor function. If you remember in chapter number 55 we talked about spinal cord control of motor functions. Now today we are going to talk about how does your cerebral cortex and the brainstem they control the motor functions. Now this video has to be watched with my neuroanatomy videos uh, where we talk about a lot of corticospinal tracts. So basically, jo corticospinal tracts, hai, they in detail and this we have done from Snell. So you have to must watch, uh, you know, these videos before you embark on to this particular chapter. Because in this chapter, we will talk more about how your cerebral cortex controls your motor functions ko, and also the brain stem. Okay? So most voluntary movements in the body is initiated by the cerebral cortex and uh, it kind of goes to the lower brain areas such as the brain stem or wahan ja ke particular patterns ko activate kiya jata hai so the patterns of excitation or patterns of inhibition those are activated so the major master control is the cerebral cortex and then we have the brain stem and therefore i told you that the cerebrospinal uh, or the corticospinal pathways are very important to understand first because this chapter may be it's more sort of anatomy uh, than the physiology so you have to first understand the neuroanatomy or this chapter may be uski kafi sari repetition hai but my suggestion again would be go to my neuroanatomy playlist and uh, try to master corticospinal tracts from snell Okay, now the motor cortex and the corticospinal tract. Uh, this particular figure is the first one that you have to remember. It shows the functional areas of cerebral cortex. Again, the anatomical stuff. Anterior to the central cortical uh, sulcus, occupying up approximately the posterior one third of the frontal lobe tuck, there is the mo motor cortex area. So if you see here, that's the central sulcus. That anterior to this is all the motor cortex area and posterior to this is the sensory area so that is the area that we are concerned with today because we are going to discuss about the motor functions of the brain the motor cortex is divided into three sub areas each of which has its own typographic topographical representation of the muscle group number one is called the primary motor cortex area so immediately in front of the sulcus this is the primary motor cortex area then we have the pre motor area uh, which is deep down hidden on this side of the brain and then we have the supplementary motor area which kind of helps the primary motor uh, cortex area so remember we have a very strong cortical representation of motor functions divided into three distinct areas number one the primary motor cortex area number two the pre-motor area and then number three the supplementary motor cortex area or is key designated areas so for example legs are represented on this region then feet then trunk and then arm and there is a nice figure to show so this is the sagittal section for example and this is how your body muscles are controlled by different parts of your motor cortex area this is the face region the lip region so that's how they have mapped it and that's a good diagram for you to remember okay again neuroanatomy key repetition hai so if we talk about uh, we'll have to go through some details of a particular area so let's first talk about the primary motor cortex area which is shown in this figure you see this is the primary motor cortex area all this one it lies in the first convolution of the frontal lobe anterior to the central sulcus so here we have the central sulcus just anterior to this is the primary motor cortex area it begins laterally in the sylvian fissure spreads superiorly to the uppermost uh, portion of the brain and then dips deep into the longitudinal fissure and is the same as the area four in the broadman classification so obviously brain key different areas ko different logo ne different waqton par classify kiya hai. either you call it the primary motor cortex area or you call it the broadman area class classification system may broadman area 4 now this figure also lists the approximate topographical representation and a consa part leg ko represent karega consa hand ko represent karega consa feet ko represent karega this is what is known as the topographical arrangements okay and that's an important one for you to remember this topographical organization is demonstrated even more graphically in the next figure so is figure me to bilkul detail me bataya hua hai ki hand kis region me control ho raha hai mouth kis region me so very important diagram this one and this one for you then so that was the primary motor cortex area which is immediately anterior to the central sulcus then we talk about the pre motor area which is uh, um, you know three centimeter anterior to the primary cortex area it extends inferiorly to the sylvian fissure and if you have to see the location that is the location that we designate to the pre motor area okay 
Now, nerve signals generated in the premotor area causes much more complex patterns of movement than discrete patterns generated by the primary. Inka to pata hai ki yar isne face ki movement karani hai, upper limb ki karani hai, lower limb ki karani hai. But that area, the premotor area, is a little bit more complicated. For example, the pattern may be uh, to position the shoulders and arms so that the hands are proper, properly oriented to perform the specific task. So basically, they are helping the primary motor cortex area to perform certain functions. Okay. And um, a special class of neurons called the mirror neurons become active when a person performs a specific motor task or when he or she observes the same task performed by others. So that's called. But you know, it's very important. You have seen that the child copy your work. If you are doing some particular movement, the baby starts doing it. So uh, that is being controlled by the premotor area. Then there is a supplementary motor area. As the name indicates, it's supplementary. Its uh, area has yet another topographical organization of the control of motor functions. It lies mainly in the longitudinal fissure but extends a few centimeters into the superior frontal cortex as well. So location wise, anterior to the primary cortex area, we have the supplementary motor area. Okay. And uh, uh, Tractions elicited by the stimulation of this area are often bilateral rather than unilateral. For example, stimulation of frequently uh, is area ki agar stimulation kare, it leads to bilateral grasping movement of both the hands simultaneously. Um, so it's kind of uh, something which is not uh, primarily initiating the movement, but it's kind of coordinating the movement. That's why it is known as supplementary motor area. Okay. Now some specialized areas of motor control found in the human motor cortex. Uh, we'll talk about some specific areas now, some speech area and some other areas. Uh, we have done a lot of animal experiments. On animal experiments, the results go per classify that if you a particular area of brain, ko damage kar dein, to kaun -kaun se task perform nahi honge. That's how you come to know that this particular area ka job is okay so let's not talk about the motor speech area uh, which is the Broca's area uh, figure 56 3 is the one that we have to now focus on that particular figure and uh, it shows that a pre-motor area labeled the word formation lying immediately anterior to the primary motor cortex and immediately above the sylvian fissure that is known as the Broca area which is designated as the primary area for motor speech damage to this area does not prevent a person from vocalizing but makes it impossible for the person to speak the whole words. Getting it? So, chode chode words banda phir bhi shayad bol sakta hai, but coordinated uh, jo verbatim hai, wo clear nahi hota. A closely associated uh, cortical area also causes appropriate respiratory function. So, respiratory activation of the vocal cords. Thus, the premotor neuronal activity related to speech are highly complex. Obviously, the whole nervous system is very, very complex. So, if you look here, let's see where is the word formation area. So, the word formation area area is the one which is what we are calling you remember the broca area so you see here that bit the light purplish one that's the word formation area so this is where you initiate uh, your speech and you make a very nice coordinated um, you know speeches then there are voluntary eye movement field in the premotor area immediately above the broca's area is a locus of controlling voluntary eye movement. Up of knee, uh, eyes, obviously, you are moving here and there, and you want to see something. This is what is known as the voluntary eye movement, and that is controlled by eye movement area, which is just above the uh, verbal area. Okay. So if we uh, move ahead then too, we have a head rotation area and then there is an area for a skilled movement. So these are all the areas which we have to date been able to identify are important uh, for uh, uh, performing designated tasks. Okay. Now, transmission of so up till now, what we have been discussing is purely anatomical stuff. Uh, up to, bhi baat hogi. We'll talk about some tracks which we have actually done in the neuroanatomy, but a very quick revision over here. So, transmission of signals from the motor cortex to the muscle. So, imagine this is your cortex, this is your brain, and this is the set of muscle which has to be contracted. So, neurons coming from here to there is what we are now talking about. Motor signals are transmitted directly from the cortex to the spinal cord through the corticospinal tract. And they obviously, in doing so, they go through the seri, uh, you know, brainstem area. So, they go through different parts of the brainstem, and sometimes they synapse, sometimes they do not. So, corticospinal tract is uh, very important for you to understand understand again i will refer here to my neuroanatomy videos from snell jaha humne neuroanatomy mein corticospinal tract pyramidal tracts ko bahut detail mein discuss kiya hua hai 
Okay, the most important output pathway from the motor cortex is the corticospinal tract. Yani again, this. So if you look at the arrangement of your nervous system, that is the brain, that is the spinal cord, and then this, for example, is the upper limb. So in the cortex here, the messages go to the uh, peripheral parts of the body through the corticospinal. So this is the major motor exit area. So yahan brain ke cerebral cortex mein jo bhi orders hain, they will exit primarily by the corticospinal tract. Okay, so very important information. So after leaving the cortex of the brain, it passes the neurons that passes to the posterior limb of the internal capsule um, and then uh, downwards through the brain stem, forming the pyramids of the medulla oblongata. And most of the pyramidal fibers then cross in the lower medulla to the opposite uh, side of the body and then they descend as the lateral corticospinal tract so if you look here that's the motor cortex area neuron se gai, they're going downward 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 in the medulla they are crossing to the opposite side this is what is known as decussation of the fibers and we have done this in great detail when we discuss the anatomy of the corticospinal tracts okay so that's all that you have to remember here speed uh, not important then the next heading that we have to talk about is the red nucleus which serves as an alternative pathway for transmitting cortical signals to the spinal cord so sawal yahan par ye hai ki hamare cortex mein jo bhi motor orders hain i call them motor orders yani motor um, functions ke upper limb ne contract hona hai is muscle ne is finger ne move karna so the motor orders from the cortex exit out from the brain by two pathways number one is the corticospinal pathway which we have talked about a little bit and the other one is the red nucleus it is located in the mesencephalon functions in close association with the corticospinal tract and we'll see this figure in a minute it receives large number of direct fibers from the primary cortex area through the corticorubral tract so if you look here this is the red nucleus in the mesencephalon this is the primary motor cortex area fibers here are and directed there and this tract we call cortico because cortex se are rubral kyunki red nucleus tak are to cortico rubral tract yahan tak aaye aur cortico rubral tract phir niche downward move karta hai as rubro spinal tract so rubro spinal tract mein bhi messages kahan se are ultimately motor cortex hai isi tarah cortico spinal tract mein bhi messages kahan se are the cortex hai uh, and obviously there is a lot of overlap so neurons leave uh, the red nucleus and combine different parts of the cerebellum as well as they have a very good communication with the other descending corticospinal tract so remember red nucleus is another important relay station okay wow this information is fantastic so the rubrospinal fibers uh, which means originating from the red nucleus going to the spinal cord terminate mostly on the interneurons of the intermediate areas of the cord gray matter so they go to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord they go to different parts of uh, your beautiful body okay now the cortico rubrospinal system is a necessary pathway for transmitting relatively discrete signals from motor cortex to the so remember this cortical rubral pathway jiske abhi humne baat ki it's an accessory pathway it's not the primary pathway agar aapse koi ye puchta hai ki what is the primary pathway to take messages from the brain to different parts of the body motor functions ki baat kar raha hu so the primary pathway is the cortical spinal pathway but we have a necessary hamare paas backups hain bahut sare cheezon ke body mein so this is one of the example of a backup system okay now excitation of the spinal cord motor um, control areas by the primary motor cortex and the red nucleus so ab ek baat humne establish kar li ke if this is the spinal cord it will receive signals from the cortex of the brain by two pathways one pathway will be uh, the major pathway which is what we call the corticospinal tract and the other one is what we call the red nucleus okay now neurons in the motor cortex are arranged in vertical columns uh, and this arrangement we have discussed in detail when we were doing the cortex of the brain so you know how these are arranged but that is not high yield for your examination so don't worry about it so the columnar system columnar arrangement uh, function as an integrative processing system the neurons of each column operate as an integrative processing system using information from multiple inputs so the different layers hain let me see if there is a diagram associated there um, actually not really so uh, if i draw it 
like a cartoon for you so if this is the cortex area so there are layers of neurons and they overlap and interact uh, quite a lot with each other this is called integrative approach so they are integrated with each other and then dynamic and static signals are transmitted by the pyramidal neuron not high yield for your examination purposes somatosensory feedback to the motor cortex help to control precision very important aapke pure nervous system mein ye general principle hai ki things are not happening without any control so there is a good control mechanism available so for example if there is a cortex and the cortex is giving motor function and motor signals to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord to the rest of the body ye jo motor signals hain they are also controlled by sensory information and sensory input so this heading talk talk about this and the sensory input is coming from we have done this in other parts of physiology that the sensory information come from the muscle spindle the muscle tendon organs and the tactile receptors which are present in the skin so these things the sensory input guide the cortical areas to appropriately fire the neurons Okay, now once the stimulation happens, spinal cord ke motor neurons ki, then the real function happens because if spinal cord ke neurons are activated, they give uh, you know the same impulse to the muscle, and the muscle then will contract. Okay, so figures fifty six six shows a cross section of the spinal cord segment demonstrating the following. So let's have a look at figure fifty six six. So that's a section through spinal cord. See what's happening is there are. different things that we actually see so you see the rubro spinal tract now you know that this tract is coming from the red nucleus carrying fibers from the primary motor cortex area you also see the cortico spinal tract you know that these are the messages from the cortical areas the motor cortical areas of the brain and then within the spinal cord you see this complicated network so there are interneurons and there are sensory input which is also giving feedback to these neurons and ultimately the person will get the motor nerve so this motor nerve which is coming out of the spinal cord is getting input from all these things okay so that's very important and this motor nerve will go to the end organ so that's the concept so what are you seeing in the spinal cord multiple motor and sensory uh, control systems the tracts are present there is a representative anterior motor neuron in the middle anterior so Uh, the point is that the motor neuron which is coming out of the spinal cord has huge input not only from the uh, primary motor cortex area in the brain but also from other parts of the nervous system okay right this is something that you can leave without any confusion the next heading that we have to talk about is the control of motor functions by the brain stem so up till now we have been talking about how the messages are generated in the cerebral cortex Uh, particularly in the primary motor cortex area let me take you back to the figure this one and then to the supplemental areas and also to the um, you know the speech area so there are three motor areas for you to remember primary motor cortex area supplementary area and premotor area to ye to messages wo the jo brain se generate ho rahe the now we are going to talk about uh, a little bit about the uh, generation of messages uh, from the uh, brain stem particularly the brain stem consists of medulla pons and the mesencephalon which is what we call the midbrain in other words in one sense it is an extension of the spinal cord now that's very interesting because they came uh, niche spinal cord hai aur medulla oblongata and then upar ye cerebral cortex hai ye jo beech ka area hai na that is what is known as the brain stem so brain stem ki location aisi hai ki jo bhi ascending tracts hai wo yahan se guzrenge jo bhi descending tracts hai wo yahan se guzrenge so it's, a, it's like right there in the middle okay and it contains very important centers so for example it control uh, has uh, the center for respiratory control it has a center for cardiovascular system control it has partial control over the gi functions and so many stereotype movements of the body equilibrium eye movements so these are all different components of your brain stem and they are pretty important i mean think about it if you don't respire if you don't have respiration you are gone hai na so finally the brain stem serve as the way station for command signals from the higher neural centers many of these it's like a station na ye brain hai aur ye beech mein brain stem aayega to sare upar se jo fibers aa rahe hain wo yahan se hote hue guzrenge aur jayenge spinal cord tak especially important for these purposes are the brain stems reticular nuclei and vestibular nuclei so these are two important nuclei which are present in the brain stem and they have important uh, synaptic uh, links okay now support of the body against the gravity and the role of reticular and the vestibular nuclei so these two nuclei basically helps you maintain your equilibrium um, against 
you know, gravity. Excitatory inhibitory antagonism between the pontine and the medullary reticular nuclei. Uh, the reticular nuclei within the brain stem are divided into two major groups. One is called pontine group and the other one is called the medullary group. The simple thing to remember is that if one initiates excitatory symbol, the other one causes inhibitory signal so that you maintain a balance between the muscles which that which are being supplied by these, uh, uh, you know, nuclei. Uh, that's all what it talks about. So if you look here in this diagram, that's an important one. So that's the brainstem area and you see here there are so many different nuclei. There are reticular nuclei which are two categories, A, pontine, B, medullary. Uh, this is one group of nuclei, reticular. The other group of nuclei are vestibular. So we, uh, vestibular nuclei obviously are going to control, you know, equilibrium and maintenance of equilibrium within the body right now vestibular nuclei to excite the anti-gravity muscle maintaining the equilibrium of the body so all the vestibular nuclei function in association with the pontine reticular nuclei to control the anti-gravity muscles that's all that you have to remember not more than that okay so um, what happens in decerebrate animals is something where so if this is the brain this is the brain stem and this is the spinal cord and if you cut the brain um, at a particular level, then what happens in those animals is the study matter. Board discussion Okay, so what basically happens is if you do this um, below the mid level of the mesencephalon, but the pontine and medullary reticular systems as well as the vestibular system are intact. So you cut this way, that this whole system is intact. So what results is rigidity of the muscles of the body. So obviously uh, there are more excitation of the muscle and super contraction and rigidity rigidity is the result okay with this we are left with the last part of this chapter which will talk about the vestibular sensations and maintenance of equilibrium although this is not directly controlled uh, uh, by the primary motor cortex area or should i say that this is not directly linked with the motor activity but in a way it is see how so you have this beautiful head okay and you keep moving your head in the head you have air and in the ears you have beautiful system which is known as the vestibular apparatus this vestibular apparatus involves uh, what not semicircular canals membranous labyrinth bony labyrinth cochlea and all these things contain liquid and those liquids are provided uh, the linings are provided with the specialized cells which contain cilia and these cilia can sense the directional change in the liquid so if for example the head bends forward uh, the tubes can sense that the liquid is moving forward and this message is then sent via the sensory system to the brain and then the brain come back here uh, supplying different head and neck muscles to maintain the posture and the equilibrium so this is how the system basically works so at the center is the vestibular apparatus okay it is encased in a system you know all these terminologies from my ENT lecture so this is the uh, three semicircular canals called the anterior posterior and lateral semicircular canals we have three of them in number one two and this one is three because this is at the right angle then we have the utricle and the saccule all they have important structures macula and statoconia and within each semicircular canal towards the end there is a swelling and this swelling is known as ampulla and this ampulla contains a specialized cells which contain um, you know crista ampullaris which are able to sense changes in the fluid movement direction so that's very important discussion agar main sabko simplify kar dun aapke liye so the simplest thing would be okay all this system is basically filled with liquid and that liquid can flow if you move head in this direction or in this direction or in this direction there will be movement of the fluid and the movement of the fluid is detected by the specialized cells that's what is the bottom line okay Let's now start talking about some particular structures. So macula, for example, these are sensory organs of the utricle and the saccule for detecting orientation of the head with respect to the gravity. So this is where the macula is located, okay? Macula in the utricle as well as in the saccule, it's a sensory organ, right? And it can detect the changes in the head orientation with respect to the gravity located on the inside of each utricle and the saccule of the air there are small sensory areas which are slightly greater than two millimeters in diameter they are called macula the macula of the utricle lies in the horizontal plane and the macula of the saccule is located mainly in the vertical plane and they have importance because if you have to detect the movement in the horizontal plane then it's the utricle if you have to detect changes up and down in vertical direction then it's the saccule um, 
basically यहाँ से जो fibers हैं, they will ultimately lead uh, to the uh, you know sensory nerve endings which are pitching into the vestibular nerves and then taking the message to the brain. Okay. Then directional sensitivity of the hair cells. Now each hair cell has about and and we have a lot of these hair cells. You know, macula के अंदर ही होते हैं. मैक्यूला के अंदर बहुत सारे हेयर सेल्स हैं और वो जो हेयर सेल्स हैं दे हैव अ लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स लाइक दीज द स्टीरियोसिलिया एंड द काइनोसिलियम इज अ वन बिग वन दे कैन सेंस द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द फ्लूड मूवमेंट दैट्स ऑल दैट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड नॉट मोर देन दैट एंड वंस द डायरेक्शन ऑफ दीज सीलिया चेंजेस इट ब्रिंग्स अबाउट डीपोलराइजेशन इन द सेल एंड द सेल देन कैन ट्रांसमिट द डीपोलराइजेशन टू द नर्व फाइबर एंड इट कैन देन गो टू द सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम सो दैट्स द बेसिक कांसेप्ट दैट यू हैव टू अटेन with respect to macula okay there are more details to it that if uh, the endolymph is moving in this particular direction there will be depolarization of the hair cell if it's moving in this particular direction there will be hyperpolarization but that's not something which is very high yield for the exams then if we talk about the semicircular ducts you know there are three semicircular canals or ducts which are anterior posterior and lateral they are arranged at right angle to each other and each one of them has uh, a swelling which is known as ampulla and the ducts are filled with a liquid which is called endolymph okay flow of this liquid through one of the duct and through its ampulla excites the sensory organ of the ampulla in the following manner and look this is important on the top of the cristias uh, एम्पुला के टॉप पर ये स्ट्रक्चर है विच इज कॉल्ड क्रिस्टा एम्पुलरिस ऑन द टॉप ऑफ द क्रिस्टा इज अ लूज जिलेटिनस मास व्हिच इज नोन एज कैपुला पे अटेंशन व्हेन अ पर्सनस हेड बिगिंस टू रोटेट इन एनी डायरेक्शन द इनर्शिया ऑफ द फ्लूइड इन वन और मोर ऑफ द सेमी सर्कुलर डक्ट्स या कैनाल्स कॉजेस द फ्लूइड टू रिमेन स्टेशनरी व्हाइल द अदर सेमी सर्कुलर डक्ट रोटेट्स विद द हेड सो दैट्स हाउ द एनाटॉमी इज एंड मोर डिटेल्स इन माय एनाटॉमी ईएनटी लेक्चर्स फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर कांसेप्ट The process causes fluid to flow from the duct and through the ampulla, bending the cupula on one side, and this is uh, the excitating, uh, you know, signal for depolarization. That's all that you have to remember. Okay, so this is how it is arranged. There is a nerve, obviously. There are cells which are called crystal ampullaries. This is the cupula, and this is the semicircular canal. And in the semicircular canal, towards the end, there is a swelling which is called ampulla. Within the ampulla, we have cupula and uh, crystal ampullaries. And then there are these cilia, and they detect the bend and the changes in the direction of the endolymph. And the hair cells detect them and transmit them to the nerve to be carried them to the central nervous system. okay so um then they have kind of mentioned the what happens if there is an angular acceleration what happens if there is a linear acceleration i would say it's not very important for your exam but remember the uh, saccule the um, ampulla all the uh, liquid movements they are detected by change in momentum that's an important concept grab this concept change in momentum so for example if there is a person who has to run and in order for the person to run what will happen initially jab ye running start karega to iske jo air mein ye liquid hoga it will have change in momentum and the person will adjust the body position aapne dekha runners aksar pehle thoda sa aage jhukte hain fir uthte hain fir bhagte hain but once they attain a specific speed ab इन का एंडोलिम्फ एक कॉन्स्टेंट मोमेंटम फेज में है सो इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू इन साइट एनी सिग्नल ओके सो विद दिस दिस चैप्टर इज गॉन आई थिंक एट सम पॉइंट आई विल कम बैक टू दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर एंड विल टॉक अबाउट द क्लिनिकल्स विच आर गिवन इन द ब्लू बॉक्सेज फॉर नाउ दिस इज डन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल टॉक टू यू अबाउट सेरी बैलम सो वी टॉक अबाउट स्पाइनल कॉर्ड इन चैप्टर नंबर फिफ्टी फाइव दैन वी टॉक अबाउट सेरिब्रल कॉर्टेक्स एंड नाउ नेक्स्ट वीडियो विल बी ऑन सेरी बैलम एंड बिजल गैंगलिया सो चिल्ड्रेन टेक केयर ऑफ योर सेल्फ माई नेम इज डॉक्टर आसिफ कुरैशी यू आर वॉचिंग डॉक्टर आसिफ लेक